Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh To carry on with the upper limb lectures, I'm going to cover in this presentation the anatomy of the median nerve. I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh, Professor and Head of Anatomy Department at Mansoura University, Egypt. The objectives of my presentation will be, first I will talk about the origin of the median nerve, then its course in the axilla, arm, cubital fossa, forearm, and in the hand. Then I will talk about its branches, the cutaneous, the muscular, and the articular branches. And finally, I will talk about the median nerve injury. The median nerve arises from both the lateral and the medial cords of the brachial plexus by two roots. It contains C5 to T1 nerve fibers. Its two roots arise on each side of the axillary artery and then they unite together to form the median nerve that descends in front of the artery. Its course inside the arm, which starts at the lower border of the teres major muscle, is related closely to the brachial artery. It crosses it from lateral to medial, nearly at the point of insertion of the coracobrachialis muscle. Then it enters the cubital fossa, medial to the brachial artery, then leaves it by passing between the two heads of the pronator teres muscle. The ulnar head of the pronator teres muscle separates the median nerve from the ulnar artery. Inside the forearm, it descends between the flexor digitorum superficialis and the flexor digitorum profundus muscles. Just above the wrist, it emerges between the flexor digitorum superficialis and the flexor carpiradialis tendons. Inside the hand, it passes through the carpal tunnel, which is the space between the flexor retinaculum and the anterior surface of the carpal bones, and there we can find the median nerve passing between the tendons of the fingers. Regarding the branches of the median nerve, in the axilla and in the arm and in the cubital fossa it has no branches, while in the forearm it gives muscular branches and articular branches, and then it gives the anterior interosseous nerve, then the palmar cutaneous nerve, and when it enters the hand it gives muscular to the thinner muscles and palmar digital branches to supply the skin of the digits. In this simple diagram, we can see the muscular branches that arise from the median nerve. In the forearm, it gives muscular branches to all superficial muscles of the front of the forearm, except the flexor carpi ulnaris. So it supplies the pronator teres, the flexor carpi radialis, the palmaris longus, and the flexor digitorum superficialis muscle. Then it gives the anterior interosseous nerve that supply the deep muscles in the front of the forearm except the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus then it gives muscular branches to five muscles in the hand we will remember them by the word loaf it will supply the lateral two lambricles the opponent's pollicis the abductor pollicis and the flexor pollicis. The last three muscles form the thinner eminence. The cutaneous branches of the median nerve includes the palmar cutaneous nerve, which supplies the skin of the lateral two-thirds of the palm of the hand, and also gives palmar digital branches to the palmar aspect of the lateral three and a half fingers and the dorsal surface of their distal and middle phalanges as well. Regarding its articular branches, the median nerve supplies the elbow joint and also the superior radio ulnar joint, while the anterior interosseous nerve will supply the wrist joint and the inferior radio ulnar joint. For the nerve injury of the median nerve, we should know the following. The nerve could be compressed or injured at any point of its course. The common sites of its injury are at the elbow joint when it is trapped inside the pronator teres muscle, above the wrist if there is cut wounds, inside the carpal tunnel 
it is trapped below the flexor retinaculum. The manifestations of the median nerve injury include ape hand deformity, motor loss due to paralysis of the muscle supplied by the median nerve, and sensory loss when there is a lack of sensation carried from the area supplied by the median nerve. Let's start with the ape hand deformity. This is how the normal hand looks like. We have here the thinner eminence. The thinner eminence is formed by the short muscles of the thumb. So in ape hand deformity, there is atrophy of the muscles of the thinner eminence. The thumb is in the same plane as in the hand. It is extended and adducted because of the action of the adductor pollicis and the long extensors of the thumb. And also the patient cannot flex the distal phalanx of the thumb due to paralysis of the flexor pollicis longus muscle. Also the index and the middle finger are extended and the patient cannot flex them because of the paralysis of the flexor digitorum superficialis and the lateral half of the flexor digitorum profundus muscles. The little and the ring finger can be flexed because the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus is not supplied by the median nerve. If the lesion at the level of the elbow, then all the branches that come out of the median nerve will be affected. So we will have motor loss in the following muscles. The pronator teres and the pronator quadratus will be paralyzed, so there will be loss of pronation and the forearm will be kept in the supination position. The flexor carbi radialis will be paralyzed. So the patient cannot abduct the hand and the hand will be adducted or there will be ulnar deviation of the hand. The flexor digitorum superficialis will be paralyzed. So there will be loss of flexion of the proximal interphalangeal joints. The lateral half of the flexor digitorum profundus will be paralyzed. So there will be loss of flexion of the distal interphalangeal joints of the index and the middle fingers, while the little and the ring fingers can be flexed. The flexor pollicis longus will be also paralyzed, so the patient cannot flex the distal phalanx of the thumb. Also, the muscles of the thinner eminence will be paralyzed, so the flexor pollicis previs and the abductor pollicis previs and the opponent's pollicis will be paralyzed and there would be loss of abduction and opposition of the thumb. As we can see here, in the right hand is normal, so the patient can make the letter O with his thumb and index, while his left hand has a problem, so he cannot perform the same movement. Also, the first and second lambricles will be paralyzed, leading to extension of the metacarbophalangeal joints of the index and the middle fingers. It's also difficult for the patient to make a fist. The sensory loss will be as following. There will be affection of the palmar branch and loss of sensation from the lateral two-thirds of the palm of the hand except at the ball of the thumb. Also, there will be affection of the digital uh, branches and loss of sensation from the palmar surface of the lateral three and half fingers and also loss of sensation over the dorsal surface of these fingers up to the middle phalanges. If the lesion of the median nerve lies above the wrist, there will be sparing of the muscles of the front of the forearm, while the muscles of the thinner eminence and the first and second lambricles will be affected. Also, there will be affection of the palmar and digital branches and loss of sensation from the lateral two thirds of the palm of the hand and from the lateral three and a half fingers as I mentioned before. In carpal tunnel syndrome, as we can see here, it's a common problem affecting the hand and the wrist. Its symptoms uh, begin when the median nerve gets squeezed within the carpal tunnel in front of the wrist joint. So if the lesion at the carpal tunnel, the muscles of the front of the forearm will be spared while the muscles at the thinner eminence and the first and second lambricles will be paralyzed. Also, the palmar branch of the median nerve will be spared, 
while the palmar digital branches will be affected and there will be sensory loss of over the palmar surface of the lateral three and a half fingers and also the dorsal aspect of these fingers up to their middle phalanges. This is the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening. If you like it, please do not forget to subscribe, like, and share, and do not forget to hit the notification bell so you know if I upload another video.